Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here on Sammy Taramina blog around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells and the host of Queen Taramina and Oriented Intelligence. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching Oriented Intelligence. I have to look at, not a lot to look at around the league this week, which is really, you know, very unusual considering, you know, we just um, started off spring sports. Um, you know, we just, we um, were getting in the thick of the season starting up, I mean, in spring. Um, but we got a lot of football to talk about here. Obviously, of course, the enrollment sheet was just released. The divisions are now out for football. Um, and I think this will be very interesting to see where, each team lies. Um, I think the big, um, the big news is Farmington. Um, so we're gonna break that. We're gonna break out down the um, football enrollment list um, and a lot to really, you know, and what impact does that have, um, especially for teams on the schedule. Um, so let's let's look at the um, enrollment list. I mean, obviously, um, you know who the bigger schools are around the OAA. Um, you look at. Schools like Lake Orion, Clarkston, um, Troy, Troy, Athens, um, definitely top five in rural schools in the state. Um, but when you look at the divisions for football and, you know, obviously you hear the news about, um, you know, um, obviously you hear the news um, with the list coming out. I mean, like to really impact how the divisions are going to go. I mean, it really impacts um teams that are in division one and division two usually from a playoff point perspective um you really look at um the playoff points um from division one um you look at um you know in the division two it's really important when you look at those numbers and then you look at um you know the schools in division three and also division four um harper woods for the postseason is in division four along with Pontiac, um, which is really interesting. Um, you know, obviously Harper Woods won the Division Four State Championship last season, this season. Um, they've got a lot of t- proven talent coming back, and they're playing a really tough schedule, um, playing a lot of D1s and D2s. People are going to say, well, you know, that's how Harper Woods got the, um, won the Division um, Four State Championship, playing that vicious schedule. And I know a couple months ago when I talked to Coach Rob Oden, um, obviously that is where the, um, the schedule really helped Harper Woods. I'm considering, you know, they had a number one seed in division four. Um, they really had the, um, they ended up playing, um, you know, they, they, I mean, like they ended up playing that tough schedule and, and look where it got them. I mean, it got them the division four state championship be, just because playing at schedule. And now you look at them this year, um, Gonna be in the white again, but you're playing a lot of D1s. Um, when you look at teams like Rochester, you're playing against them. Um, now, Seaholm is D2, Groves is D2. Um, you know, and then of course, um, you know, so those are gonna be some interesting games. I mean, they still gotta play Oxford, who's a D1 um, school. And I mean, like, so when you look at Harper Woods' schedule, I mean, like, it's gonna be interesting to see how. You know, Harper Woods, you know, they're going to benefit again from playing that type of schedule. And then, you know, you look at a team like, you know, a D1 school having to play a D4 school. It's really difficult on them. I mean, so when you look at a school like Harper Woods, you know what I mean? Like, you look at, of course, yeah, Harper Woods, heck of an opponent. I'll tell you that much. But, you know, but when you look at based on a playoff point perspective, um, you know, for Harper Woods, it's a big deal for them. But when you... Look at a school like Oxford, um, who's on the schedule for them, or Rochester, who's on the schedule. Stony Creek is another one who's on the schedule. I don't know if that's going to benefit those schools as much as it's going to benefit Harper Woods. So, and another school that benefits from that is Pontiac. I mean, Pontiac, um, they're going to be in Division Four for football. Um, you know, and I know what, Co- and I know the challenge that Coach Wendell Jefferson has over there, um, and it's a difficult task. Um, but anytime you return a quarterback like Connie Donaldson, um, that's going to help your program. Um, depth's an issue over there for Pontiac. Um, I think when you look at when you look at building depth, building the situation 
you know, where it is right now over there at Pontiac, um, you really, this is a golden opportunity for them to make some noise. And being in Division Four um, helps that, I mean, especially when you're playing against a couple of D1s now. Albeit when you look at the enrollment sheet and you look at a school like Ferndale, um, Ferndale is in Division Two for football. And when you look at them, they're usually in Class B for other or Division Two for other sports, um, you know, like basketball. Um, but when you look at football, you got to look at enrollment. And for Ferndale, you got to account for Ferndale University's um, enrollment in there because they're a co-op team. And obviously we talked to coach Eric Royal about this many times. Um, you know, why Ferndale and Ferndale U, um, why they're combined and D2. And I think the reason why, you know, if they would have been not combined, then obviously Ferndale and Ferndale U both teams would be in D4. But, but the sense, the fact that they're combined means that they're in D2 and, for football, and that's a difficult scenario for them if they get in the playoffs. Um, you know, because they're going to have to deal with teams like Seahome, Groves, uh, maybe Warren D. LaSalle. Um, now, obviously, Warren D. LaSalle, Ultra Lake, St. Mary's, their enrollment says D three, but they're going to they're opting to play off. They're going to play in D two, um, which is a really interesting scenario. Um, to see how that is going to go. Um, and um, it'll be interesting to see how, um, you know, Ferndale U and Ferndale, um, you know, how they compete in that division. And I think really, you know, when you look at in the division they're in, um, obviously you're playing against Avondale, who's a D3 team. Um, Avondale is very interesting because you look at the Yellow Jackets and say to yourself, okay, um, Avondale, um, they're a team that really, you know, last year under Coach Bob Meyer, they had a really nice year. I mean, they got the playoffs. They knocked off Holly, um, but fell to um, Wall Lake Western in the district final. So, but you look at a team like Avondale, who's in D3, you know, for them, it's going to, they're going to have to go through Mason. I mean, they're going to go through Wall Lake Western. I mean, you know, and Mason, if they get there. I mean, so for Coach Bob Meyer, that's the challenge. That's the next challenge for Avondale is can they handle that? And if Oak Park, you know, obviously Oak Park, you look at their enrollment, they're in D3. And, you know, when you look at Oak Park, the enrollment numbers have gone down. Um, now, the talent has really struggled under Coach Greg Carter lately. But, you know that's still a heck of a program over there at Oak Park because of the talent level over there. So when you look at Oak Park, um, you got to really look and say, um, okay, um, we're going to see what we got. And I think for them, it's going to come down to is if they can win some games, um, that's going to help them. And, Really, for Oak Park being from D2 to D3, um, that's going to say a lot about them. And we'll see. I mean, we'll see what happens with them. Um, there's just a lot of questions when you look at Oak Park. Um, but the fact they're in D3, that is um, shocking, to say the least. I mean, it's really, really shocking to see where um, they came out in the, um, in the um, enrollment list. And then, of course, they're in D3. So... You know, so that's that's shocking to see where they're at. Um, you know, also Avondale there as well. Um, and then a lot of the other schools are in D2 and D1. Um, the big one for me was the fact that Farmington was in D2 and not D1. I mean, there that was how close the cutoff was, according to the enrollment list. Because of... The enrollment list. <laughs> Farmington is in D2 and not in D1. So when you look at Farmington this year, they're going to be all right this year. I think coach from Jason Albrecht's team, um, he's going to be all right. I mean, <laughs> they're in the white. Um, 
He got a tough schedule ahead of him. Um, they do return several key players. They do lose several as well. But program strength for them is very interesting. Because there's question marks for Farmington. There is question marks for them. And <laughs> how do you figure out this for Farmington is can they figure out how how can they figure it out? That's the question that I have for Farmington is can they adjust, you know, obviously can they adjust to see how things are going to be in D, in D, um, in D2. I mean, you know, life in D1, you know, you're playing a lot of D1 schools. Um, that's going to be a challenge for Farmington. Um, the good news for them is they're going to be in the blue. They're going to likely, they're going to see their arch rival North Farmington. <laughs> and that's going to be a really interesting scenario um, for Farmington. Is can they get to, is can they get an opportunity to be really competitive? That is the big question. For Farmington, I mean, especially when you look at the division they're in, they're, I mean, like, obviously, you know, I think playing North Farmington is going to help them again this year. Um, last year, they didn't play because of the division alignment. Farmington was in the white, North Farmington was in the blue. Now, both teams in the blue, that kind of says a lot to where they're at. Um, but also, I think it's a golden opportunity for Farmington you know, say we get some points. I mean, obviously, you're playing against teams like Troy, Troy, Athens. Um, both those teams are D1 schools, even though I don't think neither of those schools are very good when it comes to talent level. Um, now, albeit, I'm really glad that Troy is playing a really tough schedule, considering that, you know, the last few years, Troy has gotten in the playoffs but hasn't really played the schedule or the um you know or to the levels of a schedule as i would say like maybe a um you know a team like oxford who i think could get in this year with only three wins considering that schedule they got this year is brutal i mean you look at the teams that had very difficult schedules who i think can make some noise um you know oxford they can get in i think with three wins i really think they can um but back to Farmington, I mean, like, this is, they got an opportunity here, you know, to win some games against D1 competition. Um, they got to play Lake Orion, which is going to be a very interesting matchup. Um, so that'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. Um, and then you look at, you know, you look at, I mean, Farmington, for me, that was the biggest shock for me was Farmington, the cutoff with Farmington. Because that team, you know, last year they struggled. But Farmington, you know, they really, they really like, um, you know, with them, there's still some question marks with that team. There is some question marks with Farmington. Um, but, it was mind-boggling for me, very surprising that they were the top team in Division Two, and, you know, and they're in D2 for the um, postseason tournament. Um, obviously, you got a lot of Division One heavyweights in there. Um, in Division One, you look at teams like, um, you know, but hypothetically for Farmington, if Farmington were to get in the playoffs in D2, um... You know, obviously, you're looking at a possible match with North Farmington. Um, maybe you would be Jesuit. Um, maybe, you know, maybe a trip to Livonia, Livonia Franklin, Livonia Churchill, Livonia Stevenson. That's a possible, possible, um, you know, possible option for them. Or, or even last year, a couple, two years ago, when they went down to Temperance, you know, having to play Temperance Bedford in the first round. I mean, that could also happen, too. I mean... You look at the geographical map, you know what I mean? Obviously, you know, it was mind-boggling, but the MHA, I remember they made a district of Farmington, 
Um, I think it was Carlson. I think it was Wyandotte, um, and Carlson and um, Bedford. And Farmington had to go all the way out to Temperance Bedford. And that was a really interesting match. I remember talking to Coach Albright about that last couple, I mean, like last year. We did the calling, and, you know, we basically, and I said to, to them, I mean, like, what are you guys doing? You know what I mean? Like, what did you guys, like, you know, you know, obviously you've had to have, you know, had a bonding experience down there. You know what I mean? It would, I mean, like, I don't know how their bus situation was, but, you know, but, um, but, you know, when you have to go down there, you know, you have to go to, to anywhere, anywhere far away. I mean, you look at, Obviously, when you look at the OAA, I mean, like, obviously, the furthest south for the OAA is Harper Woods. And you look at, of course, the furthest north is Oxford. So, you know, so I get I get it. You know what I mean? So, really, this is where that I think that, um, you know, obviously, you got to you got to you got to know where you're at with Division two when it comes to postseason. Now, you got to get there, obviously. Um, but. Just surprised, honestly, to see Farmington actually having to go, you know, farm. I mean, a couple. I mean, Farmington's always been that team that's been, whether they've been between Division One or Division Two. Um, you really look at Farmington. Um, just you know, you really look at Farmington, and you know they're like that tweener between D one and D two. I mean, like really, you know that's really where they are. And I'm curious to see how teams are going to adjust to this. I mean, because when you look at an opponent's schedules, I mean, Oxford, you know, obviously when you look at them, they got a lot of D1s. Harper Woods is a D4. Um, and then, you know, Lake Orion, you look at them. I mean, they got everybody else with the exception of Farmington. Is a D two is um is D one with the exception of Farmington. Farmington's D two. Um, obviously Lake Orion they got a tough schedule. I mean they open up the year with Northville. Um, then they got to play Celine to close out the year, which is a really difficult matchup. In Clarkson, you know they got to play Belleville week one, and I know the mood that Belleville's in, and you know, and if I'm if I'm Coach Justin Pintar, I mean, oh boy. I mean, that's not an easy match to say the least. And then, but the good news for you is week nine, Clarkson hosts Utica Eisenhower. I mean, they host them after having to go to Swinehart and they virtually got, you know, they, they were just completely throbbed by the Eagles. Now, albeit you look at Utica Eisenhower, they're going to be a very young team next year. I mean, they're going to be very young. They lost a lot of talent from a year ago. And obviously, you know, you look at Clarkston, who they got, Brady Collins. You look at both Bowman twins. Um, I don't trust their line, though. I don't trust their line nor their defense. So there's a lot of questions when I look at Clarkston, especially on both sides of football. Now, obviously, you do lose um, Desmond Stevens and Blake and a Brody Co and a, and a Brody Cozy. I mean, so those are two big losses. But like I said, I mean, like even that. With Clarkston, I mean, like, they still found a way to get to the regional final last year. I, albeit that Lake Orion game, I kind of want to put a little asterisk on that. But, but I think Clarkston, when I look at the Wolves this year, I think they're going to be solid. I mean, I think the key players for them is going to be the Bowman Twins. If the Twins play well, you know, if they play well, you know, they get some outside receiving help, um, which... You know, I look at Clarkston, I think they're going to be a team that, you know, they're going to be, um, they're a team to watch. Um, I think they could surprise some people, maybe make a run. I mean, they can make a, make a, make a run. I mean, I don't know. So we'll see how that goes. Um, when I look at a team like Oxford, Oxford, I think can make us, can make a run too. I'm really excited about how um, Jack Hendricks is at quarterback to go home with Luke Johnson. Receivers are a question mark. That's a question mark. Um, for the cats, and I think that's really where I think it's going to be an interesting thing to watch. Is can Oxford develop up front? That's really where the question is for them. Um, talk to Harper Woods, and when you look at Harper Woods, you turn a quarterback in Nate Rush, though. Um, you got to get Kobe Taylor running back. Um, you got um, 
I mean, you got, I mean, they call Gary on that wide receiver. Um, my question for Harper Woods is, is going to be the trenches. I mean, that's my question for the pioneers is, is who's going to be with the trenches. That's the big question after Harper Woods. Um, even though they're in D4, what's going to help them? But that's the big question I have for Harper Woods. Um, you know, when you look at other teams to watch for, I mean, like, obviously, a lot of the OA is in D1. Some are in D2. Um, D3, there's at least, I think there's three teams in D3. And then two teams in D4. Um, obviously, we, when you look at, when you look at the early indications, when you look at the early top 10, when I look at teams I'm really keeping an eye on for football this off season, um, everything, you know, obviously Harper Woods is my top team. I mean, when you look at the pioneers that they got back, as we mentioned earlier, um, for me, the biggest worry for them is going to be up front. And you really look at what they did against, um, you know, and I think you look at the game against, um, Grand Rapids South Christian, where up front, I felt like they were the better team in that game. Now, albeit they had to survive um, the, um, I mean, Grand Rapids South Christian's two, um, the Sailors' two toughest players, they had to survive them, which wasn't easy. But I think when you look at Harper Woods and you look at what the Pioneers have, and I think when you look at Harper Woods, Here's a team that they can, I think they have a legit chance to repeat as state champions. I think they do. Um, program strength is going to be something to watch for for Coach Rob Odenstein. And the fact they got a lot of talent coming back, I think Dakota Gary is going to have a monster year. Obviously, you look at um, Nate Washington. Now, obviously, the difference between him and Stephon Buford, it's beyond different. I mean, Buford was more of a RPO type guy. Whereas Nate Washlow, he can just throw the ball downfield. I mean, he can run, but he's more of that gunslinger that you're looking for. And it was it would last year. And the fact that those two guys worked so well, you know, you look at a team like Harper Woods and say, you know, I they have a great chance here to repeat a state champs. For that reason. So when I look at Harper Woods, you know, the schedule is tough, but they they have a chance to do very well. I think they got a chance to do very, very well this year. I, this ball, I think they got a great chance. Um, Lake Orion's my number two team here. Um, when I look at the Dragons, you would turn a quarterback like Tristan Hill. Um, you do lose Billy Roberson. That's a big loss. Um, I will be very curious to see how this defense is going to look. I've really looked at, when you look at Lake Orion, their defense is going to be, I think, the biggest concern for Coach Chris Bell because you lost so much experience on that defensive side of the ball, but you do return Trey Pacmara, um, who I think is going to be in line for a big year on both sides of football. Um, you do have Jackie Vasquez at running back, um, but I'm, the kid I'm watching is going to be Jaden Burrell. I think Jaden Burrell has a chance to have a breakout year at running back. I, I think he's got a great chance. You got a good offensive line, um, led, of course, by, um, you know, Aiden O'Rourke and um, Brendan Eliason. Um, I'm really high, and there's a, several others on that team I'm really high on. Um, you got Ryan Lusho at wide receiver, which is going to be interesting to see um, what Bell does with him. Your defense is going to be... Your defense is going to be the question mark. I mean, that is going to be Bell's biggest challenge. It's going to be that defensive side of the ball. You got a new defensive coordinator. Um, you got a lot of questions. So when I look at Lake Orion, um, I think they're going to be they're going to be all right. I think they're going to be solid. Um, you do have um, Jackie Vasquez. You do have um, you know you do have T R Hill's running ability. Um, question is going to be is who's going to be at wide receiver and then who's going to be, and the, and especially on the defensive side of the ball, who's stepping up on that side of the football. That's the big question for Lake Orion. Um, this, this off season, the really watchful, 
Um, West Bloomfield is my number three team. Obviously, they do have a um, very huge guy from Chicago um, who transferred into West Bloomfield. I heard he's 6'6", 350, um, which says a lot. Um, they do have a quarterback who also came in from Novi Detroit Catholic Central. Even though they do have a quarterback in Jamal Shakespeare, um, I'm really curious to see how you know, that quarterback competition is going to go, or are they going to go with the um, experienced senior? But I was, but when I saw Jamal Shakespeare, and he's a heck of a quarterback. He's a heck of an athlete. I mean, he's a really talented player. And you look at, and you look at West Bloomfield, you look at Jay Nalos playing linebacker. You got Josh Tate, who could see some time at running back. Um, he also played some linebacker as well. Um, the secondary for West Bloomfield is my biggest question mark for Coach Zach Kilbert. That is going to be the question mark. And I know the good folks, I'm Tyler Kept over at um, Civic Center TV um, very well. And I think that is West Bloomfield's biggest question is that defensive secondary because they did lose a lot of talent last year. And you look at West Bloomfield right now, um, on paper, this team's going to be good again. This team is on paper. Program strength's been a little concerning for me when I look at West Bloomfield. Um, but when I look at the Lakers, um, obviously, you know, you get a quarterback, you get a, um, a big offensive lineman to come in there. Um, but like I said, it's going to come down to is West Bloomfield secondary and can they get a pass rush? That is going to be the big question for the Lakers. And... You know, it looks like they have the athletes to do it, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, Clarkson, I have them at four right now. As I mentioned about Brady Collins is back. Um, they do have Bo Bowman twins. Defense is still a big issue for Clarkson. Um, I just think when I look at the Wolves, um, you know, I, I, I mean, defense is my biggest concern when I look at Clarkson. And... You know, here's a team that, you know, they'll score. I mean, last year they they had, they relied a lot on Dez and um and um Cozen to to carry him. They relied a lot on him. They struggled even at times, which was mind boggling. I mean, it's unusual for a Clarkson team to really struggle like that. But obviously with them it comes to program strength. Um I think the Wolves are gonna be in the in the mix for sure. Um, but there's some question marks when I look at Clarkson. There is some big, big, big question marks when I look at Clarkson, though. Even though they have the Bowman Twins, they have Brady Collins, and we know how good they are. And line play is going to be a question mark for them, and also their defense. That is the big challenges that I have with Clarkson um, coming into the um, coming in this offseason. Um, number five I got is Adams. Um, when I look at the Highlanders, you do have a you do have a, a very good running back coming back in Landon Humbert, um, but everything starts and ends with Ryan Waters. And the reason why I say this is because I have seen the film on him; he has really improved his game. Now I'm curious to see who is he going to throw the ball to. Um, how how is the line up front? Now, what helps here is that his class, his classmates, he's, he's going to be a junior, um, went undefeated their freshman year. So, for Adams, you know, they took a step back last year um, because of, you know, because, you know, they, they, they were very young last year. Very young. And when you look at a Tony Petrino team, that's really unusual for them to be a young team, you know, and to, to, to struggle like they did. Um, but they did manage to get in the, I mean, they did manage to get in the playoffs. Um, but, um, but I think I expect Adams to have a bounce back year. Um, I expect them to have a, um, you know, to be back to where, where they, they should be. And I think obviously it starts and ends with waters. And I think he's going to be the guy that really gets Adams, Back to where they need to be, and I think they're going to be they're going to be a very interesting team. They're a team to really watch for this summer, um, to see how the program strength goes 
Um, obviously, you know, it was very unusual for them to struggle like they did in the varsity level. So we'll see. I mean, I got Adams right now as my number five team right now this off season. Um, number six, um, I went back and forth with this one, but um, I'm going to go with Groves. And the reason why I say Groves, and quarterback's an interesting area for them. I know they're high on Avery Gock. I know what he's done up front. I've seen the film on him. He's gotten a lot of D1 looks. They got a running back and they got they got another running back in Sanders. Um obviously I think he's gonna be very good. Um he's a very talented running back. Um they their defense looks better. Um, but when I look at Groves, everything starts and ends with quarterback. And I'm not sure if Cam Hardy's back or not, but when I look at the Falcons, um I think with them it just can you trust this team to make the next step? Last season, they ran into Seahome. And obviously, we know what the Kitty boys did. Both times. Both games were tight. Both games were high scoring. And Seahome won both those games. So when I look at Groves, you look at them and say, okay, can this team make the next step? Can they? I mean, you got talent. You're in D2. Even we're going to have to deal with D. LaSalle somehow. If you're Coach Flaherty, you're going to have to find, somehow find a way to beat Seahawk. I mean, some, find a way to beat um, Warren D. LaSalle. It's a tall order. But, you know, you got talent over there. So when I look at Groves, um, for me, with them, it comes down to finish. For Groves, it's about finishing games. Because they did not finish last year. You look at Groves, the expectations over there are very high. And you look at that team and the expectations they got. I think Groves is a team, you know, that you look at that talent pool and say, is this Groves' last chance? Is this their last chance? Because to me, when I look at that roster that they got, I mean, it might be. Their last chance. And, you know, you look at Gox going to be a senior. You look at, I think Sanders is a senior. I mean, like, they're going to be senior heavy. But the question I have with Groves is going to come down to is, can this team finish? Their schedule's brutal. Um, so, we'll see. But the bottom line is for Groves, Honestly, is can they finish? That is the big question for them. Number seven is the Oxford Wildcats. When I look at the Cats, as I mentioned earlier, um, Jack Hendricks is going to be, he's going to be a star in the making. I really see, like what he's done. I mean, like, you know, when Coach Jack Line went with him um, during this, when he went with them, uh, I was honestly, when I, when I talked to Coach Line, I said to myself, like, after talking to Coach Line, I'm going like, uh, are you sure going with the um, with the young one? Um, you know, what work, work? It's really worked really well. I mean, you look at what he's done. Um, you know, Oxford play, played a murderous role with schedule. I mean, they played against, like, anytime you play that murderous role with schedule, and for them to get in the playoffs like they did last year, says a lot. I mean, they... And he won that Stony Creek game. Um, and then, of course, they went on a roll um, getting into the playoffs. And, you know, for Oxford, Luke Johnson obviously going to get a lot of attention. But I'll tell you, watch out for Jack Hendricks. My biggest concern for Oxford this offseason, this summer I'm watching, is the wide receivers. Because who's who is Hendricks going to throw the ball to? That is the big question. You know Zach Lyons' offense, obviously. You know, it's an NFL-type offense that they run. Um, it's a, um, it'll be very interesting to see how um, this team um, goes with Oxford. I mean, I think with the Wildcats, um, 
you know, off, I mean, like, the challenges that I have for Oxford are going to be wide receivers, and can they build enough depth? I mean, that's the question mark. Because Oxford had so many guys go two ways last year. So many guys. I mean, Luke Johnson went two ways. Um, there were some times Jack Hendricks went two ways. Um, so that's my challenge for Coach Line is, can he build the depth that Oxford needs? And you look at what Oxford can do, they're more than capable, and you've seen it, you know, uh, we know how capable Oxford is. So when I look at the Wildcats this year, watching them this summer, it's going to be more of can they build depth? That's the big question I have with Oxford. That is the big question, is can they build depth? Um, number eight is Avondale. Um, when I look at the Yellow Jackets, um, you know, Avondale, you know, last year had a great year. They had a monster year. Um, obviously, when you look at the Yellow Jackets, um, here's a team that's really got, um, you know, Avondale, I mean, under Coach Bob Meyer. Now, I hope they had a very experienced quarterback last year. Quarterback's the position I'm watching this summer for Coach Bob Meyer. They got line play. You do return a heck of an athlete in Justin Greer Sykes. You have Cooper Volfrey coming back. Um, you got others on that team coming back. But for Avondale, it's going to come down to is Kenny Yellow Jackets find a quarterback. You know, obviously, you look at last year, the success that that team had, quarterback play was very important. It was very instrumental in their win against um, Oak Park last season. It was very instrumental. It was even instrumental in the game against North Farmington a couple years ago. Um, when you look at what happened there. So, that's going to be interesting to see how, um, you know, how um, Avondale does. I mean, obviously, when you look at the schedule for Avondale, Avondale's one of the favorites in the um, gold this year um, with the experience he got coming back. Um, just a lot of questions when I look at Yellow Jackets. Um, but especially a quarterback, but it looks like they got everything else figured out. Um, so when I look at Avondale, um, just a lot of questions when I look at, especially at quarterback, but they got the athletes to be competitive. And I think having the right coach and coach, um, and coach Bob Meyer, um, I think the Yellow Jackets could be in line to make another deep run, but they've got, I think this, they can make a better run here. They can win a district title. Um, obviously it's going to depend where they, where the MHA sends them in the postseason. Could they send, um, if they send them North, you know what I mean? That would be interesting. Um, if they send them East, I think East would be much better for them, you know, than having to go North or West. Um, especially when you have to go to Wall Lake, um, play Wall Lake Western. We know Western, what, what their talent pool is and what they're more than capable of. Um, and then if they get by Wall Lake Western, hypothetically, then you're going to deal with Mason. Mason's a team that we know had a heck of a year. Um, what Mason did was get the state championship game in D3. What they did to Wall Lake Western, which is absolutely insane, considering how good Western's been under former farm to coach Corey Throach, um, what they've done against them was just absolutely insane. Beating them twice. Um, and also, I think Farmington, and I think Wall Lake Western has to go to Mason this year, which is brutal. But for Avondale, it's going to come down to where the MHA sends them in the playoffs. And I think that's going to be what I think they're going to have. And I think, but for sure for Avondale, they've got to get there. And they got to address the quarterback. If they can address that quarterback um, situation um, this summer, then I think Avondale could be in line for a very, very good year. Um, my number nine team is the Farmington Falcons. Um, Farmington, when I look at the Falcons, um, here's a team that um, they were young last year, but they had a nice blend of youth and inexperience. Um, now you look, they had a rough year last year in the white. Now they're going to be in the blue. You're going to be most likely having a CRR trial in North Farmington, um, which is going to 
really get the fan base really excited um, on both sides. Um, I think Farmington could be in line to have a bounce back year. I really do. Um, considering where that team's been, um, I think Farmington, you know, they got their quarterback, I think, coming back. Um, they got a couple good proven receivers. Program strength was very intriguing last year, um, which is something that they've got to address. And I think with them, um, Farmington, they could surprise some people. Um, I think they could really do some damage. Um, I think Farmington's a team that I think they're a sleeping giant. I think they're a sleeping giant in the um, blue waiting to happen. And I think this offseason will be key. Um, and I think Farms is going to make a ton of noise this year. I really think that they could make some noise this year. And then my number 10 team right now would be Ferndale. Now, people are going to say, well, why Ferndale and not Troy? Um, people are, are not Stony Creek. Um, here's what I have with Ferndale. Ferndale, yes, they got a returning quarterback in Cullen Hawk. I mean, well, yeah, Troy's got a very, Troy's got a quarterback as well. And, um. You know, they got a very good quarterback as well. So, why take Fern over Troy? Despite, you know, obviously you look at Troy. They got Jalen Peacock coming back. He's one of the, um, but when I look at a team that's played a tougher schedule, Ferndale's played a by far more tougher schedule than Troy has. And it's not even close. I mean, you look at the schedule Troy's played um, in the past and, you know, that was the big reason why Troy didn't get in the playoffs last year was the schedule they played. I mean, it hurt them. And obviously talking to Scott Bernstein and Tyler Kep last year, um, you know, that was going to be Troy's Achilles heel was the schedule. When I look at Ferndale, Ferndale's played a mass murder's role with schedule. I mean, they didn't get in the playoffs last year, and I think obviously the transition period with – with the um, coaches from Croswell Lex, the being both coordinators, I mean, like it had there had to be an adjustment period, and unfortunately for the for Coach Eric Royal and his team, the adjustment period had to happen during the season. So, when I look at Ferndale now, yes, they lose a bunch of talent, but you know, anytime you return your quarterback, that's a big deal. That is a huge deal. And your schedule, their schedule's not easy. So when I look at the Eagles, Ferndale, I think could make some noise. I, I really think that Coach Eric Royal has a chance to have a bounce back year after what happened last year. He could make some noise. And I think with the Eagles, that's where I think they can they can they, I mean, they're a team that when you look at them. And they can make some noise. They could really, really make some noise. So Ferndale, right now, I would have to say it's my number 10 team right now. Other teams to keep an eye on. Troy, as I mentioned earlier, you do return a quarterback. You got, you got, I mean, you do lose your running back and no one block. That's a big loss. Um, you do have Jalen Peacock, who is getting a lot of looks. But when I look at Troy... The line is the question. The line is the question for Coach um, for Coach Chris Fridge. The line is the question. But I am very happy Troy's playing a tougher schedule. And even though you look at what they did on their on their web on their website, you know they had the um sites where you know you're looking at games like um you know that they did. They're playing Notre Dame Prep, who's going to be an interesting matchup for them. You got like Orions on the schedule. I mean, those those two games are going to be really difficult for them. I think they're going to be difficult. I mean, you know, I mean, like, so Troy's a team I'm watching carefully. I'm not in my top 10 right now, but like I said, these are not the official rankings or like what I do in the media and the um, football preview show. But I think Troy's a team to watch. Um, I would say North Farmington's another team to watch. Uh, for Coach John Herstein, I think they're going to be, it'll be something to really watch for with them. I think they're a team to watch. Um, yes, they do lose Ryan Shelby, who graduates. But, you know, I'm curious to see how that team's going to look. 
Um, Stony Creek, how they're going to adjust under Coach Rick Powell as a new head coach. Um, how's the offense going to be? Um, how's the defense going to be? What helps Stony Creek is they got a very good, pro very good program strength that Coach Nick Merlo left behind. And it's going to be interesting to see how, um, how, um, Coach, how, um, Coach Powell does over there. And I think it's going to be interesting to see how um, Stony Creek does. I mean, they're another team to really watch for considering what they got to go through. I mean, they got a tough schedule. I mean, they went down from the red to the white. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how Stony Creek does um, this season. So real questions right there for them. Um, now, I noticed a team that I've really noticed um, – Really posted on my Twitter feed um, about the word revenge tour. And that's the Berkeley Bears. Berkeley's got a new coach. Um, but there's so many questions when I look at Berkeley this year. There's a lot of questions. You do have a nice blend of youth, of youth on that team. Last year, I don't know what happened to Berkeley. I don't know what happened to that team. Three years ago, that team was ranked number four in my rankings. They were fourth in my rankings. They knocked off Livonia Clarenceville. And the fact that the last two years, it's not been good for this team. I know they talk, I know you're talking about revenge tour. You gotta prove it. You gotta prove it. You gotta win some games. You look at last year. They had that loss to Pontiac. Pontiac, I'm telling you, they're a scary team. They lost the they lost the street sign, the Battle of Woodward, the Royal Oak. Royal Oaks getting better. But when you look at Berkeley, where's, I mean, when you got to prove to me that if you want to prove to me, you know, that you're here, you're back to where, where you want to be. I mean, like, where, where I had you ranked during the year, you got to win some games. I mean, you're good enough to win games. You got talent in that area down there. You got talent down there. You just got to go and prove it. You got to win games. You know, when I look at Berkeley right now, where I have them, I mean, last year, this team went 0-9. They went 0-9. This team's got talent over there. You got to prove it. You want to make some noise. You know, you look at a course a couple years ago. You look at um, what they did under Coach Sean Shields. You know, they had two amazing runs. I mean, they had, they were ranked fourth in the rankings. During the COVID years, I had them ranked fourth. So when I look at Berkeley, they got to find that magic of the team that was during the um, 2020 year, the 2021 year. They got to find it. They can find it. Look out. Royal Oak. There's a lot of questions with them. A lot of questions. But it looked like they're going in the right direction over there. So when I look at Royal Oak, um, be curious to see where they go. Really curious to see how they go. Um, so we'll see with them. Um, Troy Athens. When I look at Troy Athens, um, I mean, I know a lot of people are very excited about Nathan Pickett. Um, he's also he's a multi-sport athlete, plays basketball as well for Coach Dave Scott. When I look at Troy Athens, um, they need more than Pickett to be very good. They need more than Nathan Pickett, and I'm being honest with you. And you do have a football-hungry principal over there in Vernon Burden over there. Um, and I know how bad he wants to see Troy Athens into a winner. I know how bad he does. 
there's a lot of questions with Troy Athens. Um, can this team, you know, turn the corner? That is the big question I have with Troy Athens. I mean, what I don't understand, I mean, they they finally, they had, they had three programs last year. They had a freshman team, a JV team, and a varsity team. So there's questions with Troy Athens. A lot of questions with them. They're a team I'm watching this offseason. I mentioned Oak Park. They're another one I'm watching. Seeing how they do under Coach Greg Carter. They're another one I'm watching. Um, Rochester. When I look at Brett, when I look at Rochester, um, two years ago this team was very good. Last year kind of took a step back. So what does Coach Eric Vernon do? Big question. Big big question. And then you look at Seahome. Seaholm lost a ton of talent last year. Anytime you lose to Kenny Brothers, that's going to be a big loss. They lost others as well. So there's some questions with Seaholm um, for Coach Jim Dewald. I know he talked to me about program strength um, last year. But there's some questions. There's some big, big questions with them. Bluefield Hills, um, curious to see where this team goes. Um, obviously, last year, they were up and down. Um, so, I'm curious to see where Bloomby Hills goes this year for Coach Dan Loria. Um, so, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. And then, obviously, the Pontiac, um, Coach Wendell Jefferson there, um, did a really nice job building that, pro I mean, getting him the some confidence. But injury bug, they got to stay healthy. If Pontiac stays healthy this year, they're going to be a good team. They're going to be a very good team. So, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. So, final thoughts of the week here. Of course, um, we're starting at Dicka Spring Sports. Um, getting underway. Um, obviously, I did write my previews around the blog at Saginaw at 4650 Um... Obviously, when you look at, um, you know, some teams to really keep an eye on in spring sports, I mean, like, obviously, um, you know, there's a lot of teams to keep a really close eye on. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, also, when you look at um, basketball situations, obviously, we don't know the coach at MC home yet. Um, we don't know who the football coach at Safford Arson Tech is yet, even though I forgot to mention a &T. Um, here's just speaking of that, um, I don't know, um, you know, a and I didn't mention much here. Obviously, they're defending division from state champions, but, um, I'm curious to see who the new coach is over there. Um, I've been hearing rumblings that they have one in place, but I can't confirm it yet. Um, so that's something to really watch for there with a and Um, and then to see what type of talent they have over there. Um, and then... You look at, um, and then you look at, um, you know, and then, of course, in basketball, we mentioned the Sea Home job for boys basketball. Um, the girls situation, Rochester is the one to keep a really close eye on. Um, also, maybe Boompy Hills, but I can't confirm that yet. I mean, the MHA website still has Coach Kristen Massey as the head coach. Um, so, there's a lot to really look at this week. Um, when it comes to that situation. So we'll see what happens going forward um, as we go around the OA um, heading into this week. Remember, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at second away for this at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OA. All right, everybody, I'm going to take I'm going to sign off here. Take care. God bless, and I'll see you all next week. Take care. See you all then. God bless.